Hey there guys, Dragon Master here, and I want to welcome you to Star Wars in Earth, Episode 9, Code Name, Calm Before the Storm. So, I don't have anything to say, I want to get straight into the video. So, without a further ado, let's begin. So, we start off uh, with United Nations Space Command on Earth. They have just agreed to join the Republic's war effort and are immobilizing the fleet. But before they head off, they want to help rebuild Earth the best way they can with the colony's help. With the colony, sorry, colony's help. And Commander, I guess, uh, Master Chief uh, talks with Anderson before they go. Master Chief is a bit worried as he's never really left Earth before. He's been an orphan most of his life, but he he's never really seen much of space. And Anderson assures him that it'll be all right. And together, they're going to help the galaxy and make sure no one has to go through what they went through. But Master Chief says he has two new recruits for him when they join the militia. These kids join the militia, and he wants to see if they can join him. Well, he wants to adopt them since their parents were killed. And Anderson asks who they are. He says that the first kid is a boy, and he's 14 years old, and he has a little sister who's 12. And he asks to see them, and two kids walk up in front of them. He asks for their names, and they're, fr and they're both last names are Shepherds. Well, Shepherd, sorry. They are both Shepherd, but they don't want to say their first name, and Anderson understands they lost their parents. So he decides to join them up with his basically like ship well fleet he has of ships along with all the militia that he the, all the militias on earth when the separatists invaded also coming with them are the padawans and jedi to the other temples on the colonies also new gunray will be with them as he's going to be transported into republic custody but knowing that palpatine needs him alive well well, not really captured, as Palpatine knows he wouldn't last under a Republic interrogation. He'll later escape, but I'll get into that later. They head to Coruscant, drop New Gunray off, which a week later will escape from prison, and all the Padawans and young ones are at the colony, other colony temples. So they embark with their fleet and head off to the war zone. So... Now we get into the Clone Wars more. But Terrans in the Clone Wars, now that they had joined since it's year two, they would mostly focus on covering the fronts that the Republic couldn't cover as the Republic was busy in the outer and mid rims. They would cover other fronts that the Republic couldn't cover, along with helping the planets that the Republic basically took back from the Separatists. They would offer aid and supplies along with Jedi volunteers. This would help improve the relationships with, uh, with the Jedi and the people, along with the civilians of the planets. Well, I guess the people of the planet seeing the Terrans as their saviors more than the Republic. So the Terrans would, be all, would basically be at all sorts of battles. They would be at the Battle of Umbar. They would take place in that invasion. They would also take place on when Mon Cala was attacked by the Separatists. They'd also go on missions with, well, basically the Master Chief, his young rookies, both the Shepherds, would go on missions with Anakin, Ahsoka, and Obi-Wan when they, or other Jedi Masters when they had free time. Master Chief and both the Shepherds uh, were amazed at how space was. They hadn't left Earth that much. Well, the two hadn't. Master Chief really hadn't left Earth at all, and he was amazed. Also, in, in the space battles, the Separatist and Terrans fleets were evenly matched, with the Terrans having a slight advantage with their more stronger weapons, breaking through the Separatist shields with ease. But the Terrans would capture Separatist ships, that any well, really any ship they could capture. They would send boarding crews, and if they failed, they would destroy the ship completely. 
by using the nukes uh, they brought with them and leaving on the ship if they failed. Also, I want to say in case you question why the nukes worked in space, effectively, the Terrans upgraded them. I forgot to mention that in the last video. Along with other things, the Terrans that were busy back in their own territory were deciding to expand their territory more as they were taking in many refugees. And they eventually found an entire new civilization there, an entire new species, well, two species actually that they discovered. Ones were a species that called themselves Turians, and then another species was the species of the Quarians, both on different planets. The Terrans were very happy about this as they had discovered new life in the galaxy, which was an accomplishment to them. The Quarians and, and Turians were starting to learn space travel themselves and jumped at the offer that the Terrans offered them. The Terrans offered them to basically like help them advance their technology if they joined them, and they would join as official members. And I can see a, a lot of their species moved off their planets if they were overpopulated in certain places on the planets to the colonies. And this would help their, well, expand both all three cultures, really. And what was so unique about both these species were the Quarians needed special suits, apparently, due to them having a weak immune system. So the Terrans would help them with that. And the Turians, well, the Turians were like the Terrans who liked well, we're proud militaristic. Well, they liked their military. Um, yeah, I don't really know much about their species. But I do know in Mass Effect, they were very militaristic. So, yeah. So I can see them being the first aliens, like species, basically, to join up with the, with the Terrans, mili well, United Nations Space Command's military, which they would accept. So, yeah, on other news, on Coruscant, Udini was making friends in the Senate. Now that the Terrans had joined the war effort, they were making a lot of friends in the Senate. They received much sympathy after the Separatists attacked them unprovoked, and the Separatists were getting a lot of backlash because of it. Udini would join up with Padme and her group of senators, trying to basically bring peace to the war. And he would become better friends with Padme and Padme, and they would be good friends. Along with him being friends with Senator Bail Organa and Mon Mothma of Sandrilla. But on other news, Palpatine wasn't happy. Palpatine knew the Terrans were spying on him. The Terrans had formed an entire group of well specially trained agents from all like the governments of the world and their spy divisions to spy on Palpatine and keep track of him. So Palpatine was constantly on watch and making sure no one was listening or tabbing in when he was talking with his apprentice. But he also wasn't happy how the clones and Terran, well, United Nations Space Command soldiers were getting along. So he devised his own sort of backup plan for when he executed Order 66, and that would happen soon. So he began talk with the Kanellans, and they uploaded something into all of the inhibitor chips on Camino. So there's not really much the Terrans can do to help the war, for they can help with invasions, but they can't like occupy a planet. They can help the civilians of the galaxy with giving them free supplies and aid and everything. So United Nations Space Command would be on with with be would be on many adventures. Sorry about that. I would be on many adventures with Anakin, Ahsoka, and basically during the entire war. Well, most of the war, they would be on cool adventures with Anakin, Ahsoka, Obi Wan, even Mace and Yoda a few times, or other Jedi Masters. They grew to respect these Jedi Masters along with the admirals of well the leaders of the fleets and everything like Tarkin, they understood. So all the way to the end of the Clone Wars, they would take they would be at the Battle of Coruscant when the Separatists invaded. They would basically, they would watch as Anakin would go with Obi-Wan and rescue the Chancellor. And they would eventually, well, basically after the battle was won, they would hear that Dooku was killed by Anakin and that Palpatine had been rescued. But they were suspicious about this whole kidnapping, 
it reminded me, it reminded them how the Separatists even got the Coruscant in the first place. They, it reminded them when Empress Tita betrayed them, and they wondered if the Republic had been betrayed as well by someone in the higher up and given them away to Coruscant. So with Dooku dead, they know the war was coming to an end. So Master Chief Anderson and a much older Shepard, a couple years older Shepard, along with his sister, would come to talk to Anakin about the whole ordeal and find out what happened. And they were surprised when Anakin told them that Palpatine told them him to kill Dooku, and it was the right thing to do. So they were suspicious, but they were also happy for them, as Anakin had told them that Padme was pregnant. Anakin had become good friends with Master Chief and both the Shepherds, the kids. Well, I mean Shepard and his sister. So they would head back to the ship and talk to Anderson about it and hack it as well. So they would agree to have double watch on Palpatine. But little did they know that their troubles on Palpatine was only beginning. And that is where we are going to leave off. Uh, I want to say a few things. So in the next episode, if you're wondering, it will be taking place most of the events of Episode three of, of I mean episode three of the Star Wars movies, uh, Revenge of the Sith. So that's really why I wanted to say. Um, so yeah, um, please subscribe to the channel and comment down below. And thank you for watching.